Hi, my name is Dan, and today we're going to explore the Tiger Graph Machine Learning Workbench, and we're going to walk through one of the sample projects. That way you can understand how it works and hopefully be able to uh, gain enough knowledge to set up the machine learning workbench to integrate with one of your own graphs. So the first thing that we'll want to do is head over to our workbench environment, and you can see that we're here, and we'll click on Tiger Graph ML Tutorial. And the one we're going to be working off of today is Graph Sage. So we'll go ahead, select that, and click Open. And that will bring up a notebook that we can work off of. So the first thing uh, that you'll want to note is there are a couple pip installs that you can run. Torch and TGML are already installed as part of the Workbench package, but we're just going to go ahead and install TensorBoard um, because we will use it for some visualizations later on. So we're just going to let that install. And now the next thing that we'll want to do is connect to our TigerGraph instance. So the next thing that we'll want to do is actually connect to our TigerGraph instance. So the first thing we'll need is the host name of our TigerGraph solution. So I'm using the Docker image that contains both TigerGraph and the machine learning workbench. My TigerGraph solution is running locally. And the graph that we'll be using is the Cora graph. So we'll go ahead to our connection and we'll make sure that our host name is the same as our graph host name. Our graph is correct. And then additionally, we will want to set the username and password that we use to authenticate with our graph. We don't need an auth token for this, so we're going to set that value as false. And we can go ahead and run this cell and establish our connection. This is the first time that we're connecting to this particular graph, so it is going to take about a minute or two for this command to run. There we go, our connection is established. So now let's run tgraph, so that's our connection that we created, dot info. And this will give us the information about our graph. So this is the same output that you would get as running the gsql ls command. Uh, we can see our graph here, as well as the different vertex and edge types. Um, once again, the graph with the vertex and edge types that are within it, any of our loading jobs, and any of the queries that we have in that graph. Additionally, we have some helpful functions like number of vertices and number of edges, which get the number of vertices and the number of edges, as you might guess. Now, the next thing that we need to do is split up our data. In the data that's been loaded, it is already split up. That's why these are commented out. But should you uh, need to split up your data for the first time, then you will run the split vertices function. So the first thing that you'll need to do is feed in the graph connection that you are going to be using. So that's here again, tgraph. And then you can set the name that you're going to assign to the different splits that you're going to make. So for this example, we'll be calling them train mask, val mask, and test mask. But these aren't set inputs. You could call these whatever you want. And then additionally, we provide a fraction here of the percentage of the set that we would like to exist within that. So our training set will contain 80% of our vertices, the value mask will contain 10%, and the test mask will contain the last 10% of our vertices. So if you needed to split up your data, you could go ahead and run those. Like I said, our data is already split up, and we can see that by running this now, where we're, get again, running number of vertices. However, we're now filtering it by this value. So if we look at our schema, uh, we can see that our vertices have attributes which depict which of these masks they're within. So if we had run that first command to split everything up, these attributes would be created on the vertices, and we would see that they will have true for the particular set that they belong in. So we can see that. So now the first thing that we're going to do here is training on the whole graph. Uh, this is generally not something you want to do with larger data sets, but it's still possible. Our data set isn't that large, so this is something that we can get away with. Um, however, the optimal way to do this is to break your graph into subgraphs, and we'll get into that a little bit later on in this video. So here we're just going to define our hyperparameters. And then from there, we're going to create our data loader. So we're just going to set that up. This so is the first thing that we need to specify is um, our graph loader. And we're going to be using our graph that we've connected to, that's tgraph. And then our in features are x, and our y features are y. And that might not make the most sense until we look at our schema, and we see that attribute x is our 
tokenized list of words contained within the article, and Y is our output classification. So those are our training parameters that we'll be looking at for training this model. And then lastly, our additional features. Uh, those are just our masks, the booleans containing the mask, and we'll be outputting this in the PyG format that we'll be using later on. So go ahead and run that. We created our data loader, and that will just take a second to do its thing. And then once we do that, we can take a look at the actual data. All right, now that that is finished, let's take a look at what our data loader looks like. So we'll go ahead and run this function just to print out uh, that format. And there we are. So now let's go ahead and uh, actually start working with our model. Here we're going to import Torch as well as the GraphSage model. Let's go ahead and run that. And now we're going to just set up Torch here. And we're just going to be using the values of our hyperparameters that we set uh, further up here. So we're just going to be using the values from there for most of the values here. And the rest of this should look pretty standard to anyone who is familiar with PyTorch. So now we'll go ahead and actually train our model. And that will, of course, take a little bit of time. So we'll come back to this when our training is finished. All right, so it looks like our training has finished. So let's go ahead and see how it did. We can go ahead and run TensorBoard in order to do that. So we had installed this earlier. And we can see now that this is running. And we will just go to link here. I believe this link will not work. And we'll instead have to go to localhost. There we go. So now we have our TensorBoard interface. And we can view the training statistics of our model. So if we set this to time series, we can get a view here as well. So you can go ahead and play around with this interface, but that is not the purpose of this tutorial. So we're going to get back at it and take a look at our um, neighborhood subgraphs function. I guess first, it is always important to test our model. Uh, so we can see that we trained it with about 80% accuracy, which is not too bad. All right, so let's take a look at breaking our graph up into subgraphs. So we're going to be using the neighborhood subgraphs method. And what that's going to do is pick a seed set of vertices and then also include any vertices that are two hop neighbors of those particular vertices. So that are vertices that are potentially out two edges. So if we had a start vertex that would traverse one edge to the next vertex, and then we would traverse another edge to that ending vertex. And we would include all of those vertices within this subgraph. So we can see in our hyperparameters, we are defining uh, some of those. So 10 is the number of those seed neighbors, two is the number of hops, and then additionally, we have some more hyperparameters for the model itself. So go ahead, we'll create those hyperparameters. And now we'll import the neighbor loader. And again, this will look very similar to our other graph loader, where we have our in features and our out features. Those are our x and our y, as defined, again, by the attributes within our nodes. And then additionally, we have some more of our hyperparameters that are being set for the model itself. So we're going to head and run this three times, once each for our test validation and training set. And then again, we'll get back into the Torch side of things. So we'll go ahead and import Torch and GraphSage. We'll go ahead and set everything up for our GraphSage model. And then we will go ahead and train our model. Again, this will take some time. So we'll come back to it when our training is complete. Our model has finished training. And we can once again check it out in TensorBoard. We don't have to run this cell again. Uh, if we go back to our existing running TensorBoard um, instance from before, we'll see that it has updated with our data from our latest run. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and test the model. Cool. There we can see 75% accuracy. Now, finally, let's use the model that we've actually trained. So we'll once again use our neighbor loader and we'll select some more data from our graph. 
All right, now we're going to set our loader to inference mode. And then we're going to select some nodes from our graph that we're going to do inference on. And finally, we'll run the actual inference and we'll see the predictions that we get for the vertices that we've selected. And there we have it. Might not look like much here, but there's the vertex ID as well as the predicted label that has been generated by our trained model. So that's the basic rundown of how you use the machine learning workbench. Um, hopefully you can take what you learned here and start integrating it into a project of your own. Looking forward to seeing what you come up with. And until next time, bye.